everyone. I'm excited to talk to you today about the simple view of reading. Dauphin Tenmer's model gives us great insight into how reading develops, and it's going to help strengthen our instructional practices, pinpoint areas for intervention, and strengthen those intervention practices as well. Please like and share this video so we can get the science of reading into the hands of all of our teachers and students. I think we can all agree that reading comprehension is that end goal of teaching reading. But we really need to look at the science to make a plan to help our students become confident comprehenders of text. How do we bridge that from where they are as a brand new reader to a confident comprehender? Too often, I see our students spending too much time focusing on reading comprehension rather than those essential components that they need to build in order to get to reading comprehension. So let's take a closer look at what those essential components are. When we think about the essential skills children need to build their reading brain and achieve reading comprehension, Goff and Tenmer's model called the simple view of reading is going to give us some help. Although there is nothing simple about learning to read, in this model, the critical sub skills of reading are simplified into their essential categories. Automatic word recognition and oral language comprehension. Let's take a closer look at these essential components. Okay, our first component, automatic word recognition. So I like to really point out that this has to be automatic word recognition, not simply decoding, because we want those words mapped for automaticity in the visual word form area. And we'll talk more about that in another video. But to show you what I mean, I wanna show you what it's like to look at words that you have mapped to your visual word form area and see how you cannot suppress those. You have to read them. So I'm gonna try a little exercise. I'm gonna show you some word cards and I want you to not read the words. Just look at them, but don't read them. Were you able to do it? Or did you read them automatically as if by sight? You can't suppress it, right? That is what we want for our students. We want all words to grow up to be sight words. All words need to be stored in that visual word form area so that they can be automatic decoders of text. So how do we get there? Let's take a look. One of the important components of automatic word recognition is phonemic awareness. Remember that we do not store words as visual holes. Instead, we attach every letter to a speech sound. In this picture, this tutor is working with this child to point out the articulatory gestures of each sound. So students need to be able to identify speech sounds and words, blend, segment, and manipulate those sounds in order to store words for automaticity. They also need to master that alphabetic principle. And phonemic awareness is the first step helping in order to help them to master the alphabetic principle. And that's going to lead to decoding. Decoding over time is going to lead to automatic word recognition. The second part of the simple view of reading is our oral language comprehension. And you'll see it written as language comprehension. And I just wrote oral language comprehension to drive home that point that language comprehension, we're really talking about oral language, not when they're reading, because that's the end goal, reading comprehension. If they can't hear and understand our language, they definitely won't be able to read and understand our language. So we need to build oral language comprehension in all of our students. Oral language comprehension is built of many things, as you'll see in Scarborough's Rope. Some of the highlights are background knowledge, vocabulary, and language structures. Often our books have much more complex syntax than our spoken language. And so reading aloud to students builds their background knowledge, their vocabulary, and their understanding of more complex sentences. So in this picture, this teacher is building oral language comprehension in her students, even though they are not reading the text themselves. It's important to note that the simple view of reading is framed as a multiplication equation with reading comprehension as the product. Let's take a look at why it's framed that way. When we take a look at the simple view of reading equation, we can see that word recognition times language comprehension, those two components we just took a look at, equals reading comprehension. 
This illustrates the point that we cannot start with teaching reading comprehension. Instead, we need to focus on those two components of reading and build automatic word recognition as well as strong oral language skills. To illustrate what this looks like with our students, let's take a look at some pretend students that have varying levels of strengths and weaknesses in these two components of reading. So here we have an entering kindergarten student. This student has been immersed in rich oral language. She has very strong oral language skills, vocabulary, and a developed um, background and content knowledge. But of course, she's a brand new entering kindergartner, so she does not have the alphabetic principle mastered. So she, we're going to give her a zero for word recognition, and we're going to give her a full one for language comprehension. Because this is a multiplication problem, one side cannot bring up the other side. So at the end of the day, she still does not have any reading comprehension. Now let's take a look at this student. This student is an English language learner, just starting to learn English. This child was already reading in his native language of Spanish. And so he was able to apply some of those skills in order to decode some words. So this is, um, probably an extreme example, but let's pretend that he's given some a sentence that he can completely decode because a lot of those um, sounds translated from Spanish and he understands what reading is, but he was not able to comprehend any of the language that he decoded. If that were to happen, we would still have a zero in reading comprehension because even if you can decode the language, if you don't understand the vocabulary of that language, you will not be able to comprehend what you read. Now, these two examples are obviously very extreme and very rare. So let's take a look at what it might look like in a more average student. So we, here we have a young student who is struggling with that word recognition piece. This is very common amongst our dyslexic students. Maybe they have some deficits in phonemic awareness, and that's going to affect their automatic word recognition ability. This student, though, has great language comprehension. She can understand, she can speak well, and use a high level of vocabulary. So sometimes a student like this will be able to compensate for that weak word recognition, and we might not see a big problem until later on but look at what she is actually comprehending as she reads. That 0.5 in word recognition greatly drags down the total. Something else that's really important to keep in mind here is that if this student continues to struggle with word level reading and she stays stuck in a leveled reader, maybe a first grade level, and she goes to second grade and third grade, what's going to happen is that that other score, the oral language score, is actually going to start to dip because she's not given the same opportunity to read at the same level as her peers. And through exposure to text, we build our oral language vocabulary, our background knowledge, our syntax and structure of language. And so that's one of the dangers of leveled text because when they're stuck in a level, they get stuck in that oral language level as well as the decoding level. So please keep that in mind with your students that even if they're a weak decoder, we need to give them access to grade level text to make sure that that other side of the simple view of reading, the oral language side doesn't slip too. Now let's take a look at this poor frustrated little boy. So he has deficits in both word recognition and language comprehension. And this is the most common scenario that students struggle at um, in both components. Maybe they're, they struggle a little bit more with word recognition. They struggle slightly with language comprehension. But students that struggle definitely will most likely have deficits in both sides. And when they have deficits in both sides, it greatly impacts the product. So you can see that this is not a sum of the parts that multiplication problem really shows us how those two components affect reading comprehension. So what we want for our students, we want them to be strong in both components, word recognition and language comprehension. I encourage you to keep the simple view of reading in mind as you plan instruction for your students. 
if you have older students in an intervention and you're focusing on reading comprehension, I encourage you to take a deeper look. What are their phonemic awareness skills? What phonic skills have they mastered and which ones do they need to revisit? Make sure that they are solid in automatic word recognition. Make sure you're building their oral language, their vocabulary, their background and content knowledge to help them be more confident. We need to look at those two components of the simple view of reading to help make the best readers we can have.